Hey guys, what's up? It is Ripe again, back with r slash am I the a-hole, where people want to know whether they are a horrible person or not, and we help them decide. Without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, am I the jerk for laughing at a customer? This happened to me yesterday at work and it is something I will never forget. I work at an animal shelter and I had a customer come in who I remembered from a few weeks ago. A man who had adopted this cat named Nelson. I remember this because Nelson was one of the few cats we listed as sensitive so we know to keep them in a private room where they won't be bothered by crazy younger cats. Because he came from a home where there was trauma. Due to this, he is extremely skittish and can misbehave in occasion. The man came in with Nelson in the carrier and came to the front desk asking to talk to our manager and that he had a complaint. I asked him what the complaint was, but he insisted he wanted to talk to the manager, Ellen, who helped him pick Nelson out. It takes a few minutes to find Ellen because we are all generally all over the place here and when we come back Ellen asks the guy what the issue is, is the cat sick or did it hurt you etc. General things we ask when people roll up trying to return a pet. In most cases we can work it out and make sure the animal does not have to be returned. I stuck around because I wanted to hear why this guy was trying to return the cat because I am nosy. He said he refuses to listen to any order I give him. Ellen and I were a little puzzled and asked what he meant. Ellen said, Well, we don't know his full training history, but most cats know the general word no because of the tone behind it. Have you try? The guy cut him off and said, He's choosing not to listen to me. I told him the rules when we got home and he has ignored every single one. The guy went on a rant saying how the cat was told to use a litter box, but he pissed on the floor multiple times, how he told the cat not to go into the spare room, but he still does, and so on. And right then it clicked to me. This guy thinks the cat understands what he is saying. I asked him, wait, do you think the cat can understand you? Like, he understands the words you say to him? The man tilted his head at me and looked at me like I was an idiot, and said, He's choosing not to, that's the effing issue. I could not help it, but I busted out laughing so hard I almost teared up. That's just never ever anything I've ever heard of, someone genuinely thinking animals can understand what a human was saying, like they were also human. Long story short, I was told to leave the room by Ellen who figured out the issue, and I did kind of feel like an a-hole after, because I guess the guy had never had a pet before and had not really been around animals other than a few well-trained dogs and he legit thought animals could understand you. My boss was not mad at me at all but told me I acted very unprofessional, which I do agree to some extent. I don't think I was an ass, but I know I should have not laughed so hard. I was on kennel duty the next two days. I shouldn't have laughed in front of him, but damn, I couldn't help it. Edit, the cat was returned, but in this case it seems to be the best outcome. Also, shelters are not always the worst situation for an animal, we love our babies at our shelter. Not case for all though, and second, I will update when he finds his forever home, I would take him myself, but I have a 13 year old cat and a 2 year old lab, so it is not the ideal household for the little guy. So guys, back to the initial question, do you think OP is an a-hole for laughing at the customer? Let us know about your opinion in the comments. Personally, I wouldn't say he is an a-hole, but definitely it might be a little bit unprofessional. And a user in the comments seemed to agree with me, he said, not the a-hole, not owning a lot of pets is not an excuse for thinking that cats have that level of comprehension, he is an adult. However, as someone who volunteers at a cat shelter, I am a bit concerned that a sensitive cat was allowed to be adopted by this level of ignorance. I'm not sure how a gap of misunderstanding this large about how cats work gets missed. I realize beggars can't be choosers, but part of placing shelter animals is making sure they are in a home appropriate for their needs and that the owner understands that. And another guy said, you are the a-hole, but I cannot judge you too harshly for it. You were at work, so you should have kept it together, you could have been fired for this, but it is a pretty funny story otherwise. 
And another person said, not the a-hole, because that is the dumbest stuff I've ever heard. You should have offered him a new cat with an English masters and a can-do attitude. And another guy said, you are the a-hole, but it is still funny. Also, I think they do understand more than we give them credit for, they just flex on us. My cat will not use scratching posts for instance, and she is allowed to scratch this wooden beam in the basement that holds up the handrail. She's got some nice furrows worked in it, but no other wood in the house. She went up and scratched the wooden desk in the dining room when I was looking right at her. By the way guys, I know that we have a lot of cat owners in the comments, and I'm curious, to what extent does your cat listen to you? Let us know in the comments. And the next one is an update to the cat story. Good news ladies and gents, the news is our boy Nelson has found his forever home. He got adopted 8 days ago and I've been waiting to see if it's stuck before posting. Nelson became a top priority to adopt out as he was one of our most difficult but favorite cats we took care of. He became pet of the month and got the attention of an older gentleman who came in, get this, with a printed out copy of our Facebook post. It was very adorable of him, this man automatically took us as a great candidate for Nelson since he was an experienced cat owner. He had a bit of a sad story, his wife passed last year and their 18 year old tabby passed away 4 months ago. He was very lonely and wanted to get a new friend but did not want to get a young cat, he is older and does not have the energy to take care of a demanding cat. Nelson was absolutely perfect, I've seen very very heartwarming moments with pets and their new families, but this one was a top. As you guys may remember, Nelson is a cranky a-hole that you cannot help but love. He is not really nice and he is standoffish, but I shut you not, when we brought him into the meeting room, he pranced over to the man and hopped up onto his lap. My jaw almost hit the floor. After 30 minutes of Nelson going ape crap over this man, he was adopted and went off to his new home. The man has sent us photos and updates of Nelson since then and it seems to be going very well. I guess he speaks cat. I won't be posting photos as the man is in them and you know, I'm trying not to get in trouble at work again. Thank you guys for being Nelson's biggest fans and I am so stoked that both of them got a happy ending together. Edit, wow, thank you for the gold and for being such kind people, we need people like you all in this world. And guys, if you have watched until here, please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments and also like the video to show your support if you want. Thank you very much in advance. And in addition, please don't forget to let me know whether you enjoy or don't enjoy these r slash am I the jerk stories. Thank you very much. And the next one is titled, am I the jerk for buying a $50,000 guitar for $4,000 and refusing to sell it back when the buyer found out the real value? This happened a while back. My wife and I still talk about it every once in a while, she is on my side and most of our friends and family are. However, when it happened it was like World War 3 between us and her co-workers and others. So here we go, I've been playing the guitar for 22 years, I know guitar values and whatnot very well, I am very into the guitar market. At my wife's old company she was hanging out with co-workers one day after work and she mentioned that I play guitar. A co-worker who I guess is very popular at work said that his dad passed away and he was selling his dad's things. His dad had a guitar and asked my wife if I would be interested in it. My wife texted me and I said to have him send me the info on the guitar and the price. The next day he texted me the picks and price. It was a 1952 Telecaster in mint condition. He had the original receipts which was crazy. That's how I knew the date. I asked what he wanted for it and he said he looked up telecasters online and he thinks $4,000 is fair. I texted back, I will take it for $4,000 and went to pick it up. The guitar had no sentimental value to him at all. 
Here is the issue at hand. The guitar was slash is worth approximately $50,000 depending on the buyer and I knew it. When I got the guitar, I told my wife the price and what it was worth. She was floored. Fast forward two weeks, her co-worker tells my wife he just found out what the guitar was actually worth from a family friend and wanted it back. She said, well, he really likes the guitar and he knew it was worth $50,000, which is why he was floored you offered it to him for $4,000. He really likes it and I doubt he will sell it back, but you can ask. Probably not the smartest thing for her to say, but she was caught off guard and it is not her fault or problem, he contacted me and asked to buy it back. I said that it is not for sale, he then said I scammed him and he was going to sue me and take my wife to HR for being a part of the scam. Which was nuts, but he actually did contact HR. They were cool about it and said it is not their problem, it is between him and me. Over the next few months he made things very uncomfortable for my wife at work. He would bug her constantly about it, she eventually had to go to HR for harassment and they actually let him go. She complained twice and he was warned and did not stop. He has contacted me several times about it, so I got a restraining order for harassment too. I blocked him too, I have not heard from him in about a year. Am I the jerk here? Update, well, this post blew up way beyond what I was expecting, it looks like I was voted not the a-hole, there's over 5000 comments, I could not read them all, but I did read a lot. Just to clear some things up, I left some things out because I did not want to influence opinions and really wanted it to be about me buying a guitar at significantly lower market value versus the people in the story. I did include the fact that the guy was harassing my wife at work, not to make the guy sound bad, but because I thought it was relevant to the story. Here is some specific details I chose not to include. The guy and his dad were not close at all, so those people saying he was grieving and I took advantage of him, that is 100% not the case. When I went to get the guitar, he was telling me he had not talked to his dad in 6 years and was actually annoyed he had to deal with a funeral. The dad bought the guitar new and never played it. Luckily it was stored in a closet and not in a basement or attic. There's no issue with the wood or electronics, it plays like a dream and I could not be happier. I am not selling the guitar to the son or anyone, it will be with me for a long time. I am in my 30s, so maybe in 30 years it will find a new home. I would have maybe considered giving the guy more money or giving him one of my guitars to sell on his own, but I decided not to do that after he left a terrible voicemail on my phone the day he found out about the real value. He demanded it back like he was entitled to an object, he sold fair and square, called me a POS, called my wife a POS and said he would do bad things if I did not sell him the guitar back. And to those people who say they would have told the guy the real value, that is a load of horse crap. If you went to a garage sale slash estate sale and saw an item worth $5,000 priced at $50, there's not a snowball's chance in hell you would walk up to the homeowner and tell them they mispriced it. You would buy the item and then tell all your friends and family what a great score you got. Don't even kid yourself like you wouldn't do that. I don't feel bad about buying an awesome guitar at a steal of a price. I was curious what others would think and it looks like I'm not the a-hole. So thank you Reddit, I can play the guitar with zero guilt now. Not like I felt guilty before, but now my feelings are justified. So guys, I'm curious, what do you think about this story? Is OP the a-hole? Personally, I would say he is definitely not the a-hole in this case, however, if it would have been a different case where maybe the seller did not know that this was a very special and important guitar for his dad that passed away, then maybe it would have been different. However, since the guitar apparently had no sentimental value whatsoever for both the seller and his dad, there is no way that the OP is the a-hole here. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. And a user in the comments said, not the a-hole, when you sell something it is your responsibility to know or determine what it is worth, not the person you are selling to. Interestingly enough, another person in the comments said, that is not necessarily true, in some countries what OP did might even be illegal. In Germany for example, as far as I know, a contract can be considered disputable 
or even void when the bought object had properties either one of the parties did not know about that would have influenced their decision to be part of said contract. That is partly to make sure that people are not conned by other people who have way more expertise in something. I am not sure whether that holds for private contracts too though, but still, the seller obviously didn't know the real value of the guitar and if he had known, he wouldn't have given it to OP for the $4000, which OP knew, hence him not asking, are you sure about the price? Plus to be honest, OP is pretty effing stupid for doing that to someone their wife worked with. They basically scammed someone, felt really effing good getting such a good steal from someone who didn't know the real worth of something they just inherited because of knowledge OP has because of a particular interest of theirs and now they get all Pikachu faced that the other person is angry and made things crap for OP's wife at work. Harassment still is not okay in any shape, way or form, so before that I would have said you are the a-hole, but with the harassment he is the a-hole. And the last one is titled, would I be the a-hole if I go to HR about a co-worker? I started a new role as the office manager for political strategies think tank about two weeks ago. It is pretty standard stuff, I have a co-worker who is a researcher who we will call John. I used to temp here a couple times a week, so we have met before and he was always very nice and liked to chat. That happens a lot in temp jobs, there's always one employee who wants to make you feel a bit more comfortable and all that jazz. I have always been cordial, but had recently become more standoffish as I am in a real role and I have a lot to do. His friendly ways have escalated since I officially started, it went from simply Hey, good morning, to Good morning, how was your night, got a lot of work today? I have openly told people I prefer to not talk about my personal life simply because I am here to work and help maintain day-to-day -day operations. The only person who knows a minuscule of information is my employee but she's only in two days a week but the office is aware that I will be in LA for four days in two weeks but that is all they know. I have shared nothing else as I need them to grasp that I am three hours behind so I don't want to be annoyed with Can you order white out? Yesterday was when I began to feel uncomfortable, during lunch everyone clears out aside from me and John who is sitting upstairs. At some point he uses the restroom which is next to my desk and during that time my boyfriend called me to confirm a few things for LA, including what we are doing for a day trip to Santa Barbara. During the conversation I heard the toilet flush and sink run, but I realized I never heard him come out of the bathroom. Our phone call ended with, since you are working from home today, can you please take some chicken down so we can make dinner right when I get home? Okay, love you, bye. I slide my phone in my pocket and BAM, the bathroom door swings open and I am met with, You said you are going to LA, are you going on another trip to Santa Barbara? Who was that on the phone? I calmly said Santa Barbara is only 1.5 hours from LA on the train and I am excited to see the Pacific coast and a pretty simple, that was my partner. John left me alone for the day until it was 5.30 and he left and asked if I wanted to get a drink after work to which I declined because I don't drink and I didn't want to. That night while eating I received 5 texts from him asking Did your friend take out the chicken? What are you making? Hello, I ended up picking up a pre-made meal from Wegmans, I wish I had someone to cook with each night. And my personal favorite, are you more of an ice cream or sorbet girl, you're such a mystery. Today I've been slammed with calls from reporters and other crap due to Cohen, so the staff has been instructed to not bother me. But now I am faced with a dilemma, my HR manager is my direct boss but I've only been here on their payroll for two weeks. John is great at his job, he gets some of the highest markers out of anyone, but I obviously know he's not immune to being reprimanded. My fear comes within the fact that I feel I will be looked at as an a-hole if I talk to a HR as I am new and there's such stigma around reporting misconduct. So once again guys, the question for you to answer in the comments, would OP be the a-hole if she goes to HR to complain about this creepy coworker? And a user in the comments said, not the jerk, that not having anyone to cook with remark is kinda creepy, you would not be the a-hole for informing your boss, but I understand the fear of blowback. 
It is only gonna get worse from here on out if you don't put your foot down. Hey boss, I would like to put this on your radar real quick. I was minding my own business at lunch at my desk and John eavesdropped on my phone conversation from the bathroom. I know the bathroom is right next to my desk, but he's been interrogating me over it via text during and well after work. I find it distracting. And another guy said, not the a-hole, this guy intentionally called your boyfriend your friend after you clearly stated they are your partner. They remember the detail about setting the chicken out, but if they knew you were having dinner right when you get home, why invite you to after work drinks? You are not a girl and you are not his mystery. You seem like a particularly private person and that is fine. As someone who is fairly open at work, I just wanted to say that I would also read these texts as weird, especially with the Disney clips, emails and stuff. It is okay to not want to be friends with this dude or to be less friendly. I think another person's advice on how to emphasize on how this behavior is distracting you is spot on. You shouldn't have to worry about making it clear enough to this guy that you are not romantically interested and the your friend comment really makes me think he's either trying to verify that you are indeed single or he's just willing the partner away. You are not falsely accusing this guy of anything by saying him contacting you after hours about stuff he overheard is distracting and no matter how long you've been at a job, you deserve a respectful work environment. And guys, I would definitely 100% agree with the last comment. This guy seems extremely creepy and obviously he's trying to get romantically involved with the OP. And if OP is not interested, which she clearly is not, there is no reason why she should continue to get bothered by this guy. However, she might talk to him first instead of straight up going to HR. And now the update to the would I be the a-hole if I go to HR about the coworker story. Over a week ago I made this post, you guys all gave me some wonderful advice and I wanted to provide an update as a lot has happened. The next workday after I posted, I sent John an email, a lot of you said communicated all through your email, that read as followed. Hey John, I wanted to follow up about our conversation about after hours communication. As I said, please send all non-emergency communication to my email, if you are curious what I consider an emergency, here are some examples. Locking yourself out of the building, safety hazards, issues, arming slash disarming the alarm, press camp out, life-threatening situations. Like I said, if it is anything less, feel free to email me, I frequently check emails throughout the evening. Best, Frank in the coil. He responded back with a simple, okay, but at least he acknowledged it. I felt as if my email was pretty neutral and was clear what I was okay with. A couple days pass and I opted to telework yesterday after falling during my run. My boss was not in either, so the admin team was empty. At 2pm I got a flower delivery, now this typically wouldn't raise flags for normal people, but for me no one really knows I lived there. My boyfriend bought a house a month or so ago and I've started splitting half my time there. I use my apartment as my main address for now until my lease is up. Anyway, the delivery says, Get well soon, beautiful. JHT. It's from John. I begin to get uncomfortable and call the office and I immediately ask to speak with John and he is thrilled that I am calling him and I ask about the flowers and tell him I am recording the call, which is legal in Virginia, due to one-way consent and he says that he found my location via extensive research. He was able to get my listed home address via Google and sent me a bouquet this morning because my neighbor let him know that I split time between my apartment and my boyfriend's. So he went through an article he found with a photo of my boyfriend and I at an embassy gala and then started researching my boyfriend and found that he bought a house and then tried to send to that address which worked. I proceed to tell him this makes me uncomfortable and I am not happy right now. He opts to begin having random things delivered all day, like Papa John's, Postmates, Prime Now, Valentine's Day items at that and even an edible arrangement. I photographed everything and this morning I went to my boss. My boss is shocked, I have let her know how unsafe and uncomfortable I feel and that this is impacting my life in a way I am scared by and my boyfriend is now leaving work early to pick me up from the office and I take an uber from the metro even though it is only a 15 minute walk. 
She has let me know that she will conduct an emergency meeting with the executives and she has instructed John to telework until Thursday as I fly to LA Thursday early in the morning. So yeah, here's your update, thanks again for all your support on the previous thread. And guys unfortunately this was the last update so we will never know what happened to the jerk but I am in the process of contacting the OP so wish me luck, maybe I get an answer but I kinda doubt it. And I gotta say, I really feel bad for the OP, because this is exactly what I expected that would happen. This guy is seeking for a romantic relationship and obviously OP is not interested in that. And I gotta say, I am a bit shocked that her boss is also female and is not acting more strict. Honestly, I would have expected that the boss would chew John's ass out after hearing all of this, but apparently that is not what happened. Either way guys, unfortunately this was the last story for today, please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed these updates and whether or not I should continue with r slash am I the a-hole. I gotta say, personally this subreddit feels a little bit oversaturated right now on YouTube, but it seems like most people only read the new posts and not the old ones. So I think I will be able to find some gems that you haven't heard before. Either way, I hope you have a fantastic day and I see you again tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching.